Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing really good. So recently I have found myself wanting to switch away from Apple for my daily driver uh, as a mobile device. I did a little bit of poking around, but I never really made a decision as to what to buy or, or what to do. Well, I opened up my email here a couple of weeks ago and I've, I've got an email from this company called Blackview and they have offered to send me one of their newest model um, smartphones to look at. So this is the BV8800. It is said to have a 90 hertz display with a MediaTek G96 processor, 50 megapixel camera, and night vision. It's powered by Doke OS 3.0, which is pretty well just based on Android 11. This little thing has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of uh, storage memory. It looks like it also supports two SIM cards and has a pretty whopping battery. They're actually claiming like 700 hours of standby time. The water resistant rating is actually pretty spectacular. It's IP68 and IP69K rated. It looks like it has a whole bunch of cameras on the back of it with the best one being 50 megapixels and it's also got night vision. Now I think this is going to be just like uh, infrared night vision where it's going to be able to see in the infrared spectrum. It has a 16 megapixel front facing camera and it looks like the display size is about an inch larger than my uh, iPhone 7 Plus. We've pretty well got some standard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth features. Now this one here, th this one here kind of confused me for just a minute. It has GPS, GLONASS, Baidao, or I'm most likely not pronouncing that right. And it also has Galileo. So there's actually more than just GPS positioning satellites out there circling the globe. There are actually several more. If you know more about this than I do, feel free to let me know in the comments below. So we've got some standard network connectage here. Looks like we're gonna support GSM and CDMA. And then also we've got NFC, fingerprint, face ID, SOS, OTG, and Google Play. I th oh, face ID. Face ID is interesting. I've, just, I've, I've come to sort of hate face ID with Apple phones. Uh, I've never used it on an Android phone. So inside of this box is the brand spanking new BV8800 from Blackview. I've covered up the IMEI and serial number and stuff here to keep me from getting blacklisted. The box actually seems, oh, I don't know, suspiciously familiar. Let's see if it has a familiar way of opening. Ooh, I got a little bit of suction. All right, here's what we have inside. We have the BV8800 itself, and then we have the charge cord, which it is a USB-C brick that came with it. Uh, it looks like it's set up for um, not the United States. It came with a USB-C cable, which I have come to really, really like these laying around the shop. I wish everything here was USB-C. And here we are. Here's our BV8800. It is every bit of as heavy as I thought it would be. I think we can just slide it right on out of its wrapper here. Peel that off there. This actually has a really nice feel to it. I'm, I'm liking this. So on the back, we very clearly have four cameras. I wonder what things are gonna look like in the next few years. Are we gonna have like just all cameras across the whole back? Now, since this has the ability to see infrared, I'm thinking that it's also gonna have really, really bright infrared emitters on the back of it. Um, let's see, I bet you this is the power button. Let's go ahead and hold that down and see if it'll power up. And also I read somewhere that the power button is a fingerprint scanner as well. So here we go, Blackview is booting. So from here, this is pretty well just standard Android setup. I'm gonna skip past this. Come on, baby. Okay, we're not gonna copy anything. I have not been on Android in a long time. Okie dokie, this thing has finished its initial setup and it is up and going. So while it was finishing that setup, I took note that the SIM card tray is here. It has a button on this side, which I'm not exactly sure what that is yet. And then we had our power button on that side, so we have sort of like opposing buttons. Now, this has dual SIM, so it should be like one of those really long... No? No, it's one on each side, so it's like a back-to-back -back SIM thing. 
Now it does actually say shockproof here, waterproof here, which that's pretty stinking bold just to put right on the outside of your product. So it looks like a pretty standardish smartphone, but we've got some really, really decent specs here. I expect to have some not so standard settings here under the camera, low like this night vision setting. So we're gonna play with that later on. What I'm gonna do here is just sort of put this thing to the test and see how it goes. Okay, here it is, here's the Blackview phone. Oh my God, it's heavy. That is exactly what Jordan said, and I didn't get to record it. Holden, Daddy has a green phone. Look how nice, but it's so heavy. It's got games on it. Oh, finished? it's got song pop on it already. It's got what? Mm -hmm. Yep, you hang on to it. Check that thing out. Is it heavy or what? It's really heavy. I told what you. What do you think it's about crazy. it? It's crazy. It's so heavy. What? What do you think of that phone? Yeah. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is charge the battery, but it's proven to be difficult to get that open with my finger. Let me try with a screwdriver. And I don't want to open it wrong. Okay, so it just sticks down in there really good. Let's get this sucker hooked up and get it charging. Oh, yeah, baby. There we go. Time to pick our teenager up from work. That's the phone they sent me to review. Dog, it's not for you. Is it an Android? Yeah, here, hold it. I like how big it is, and I don't mind the heaviness. The thing is nice. So this is Doke OS. I have been away from Android for a long time, so I'm not a good person to give you a comparison between Doke and, and Android. I assume they're just about identical with some minor changes. One of the first things that I changed whenever I got into this phone was under the display settings, I found this thing down here that is display real-time network speed. That enabled me to have the network speed showed up here at the top right-hand corner of the screen. And then also, I disabled this screen portrait orientation lock because I want the screen to be able to rotate whenever I rotate the phone. Under the battery settings here, I enabled battery percentage. That gives us the percentage in the top right hand corner of the screen. Yeah, in picking through the settings on this phone, I'm realizing just how much I've been holding myself back by being an Apple user. With Android, you really, you can manage your own life. So one thing I'm gonna go ahead and change is that we are stuck with this four by, what is it gonna be like six grid or four by five grid here that they give here. If we long press and hold here on the home screen and we go down here to home settings, we can actually change that. Right now it's set to four by five. I would like for that to be just about as big as possible. So I'm gonna set that to five by six. And what that's going to do, that will now give us five icons across and then six high. And then also it gives us the ability to, if we want to put one more down here at the bottom, it'll scooch them over and, and let us do that. So with Android, you've got all this customization. Now to check out the hardware that is on this phone, I have installed device info, system and CPU info. And this is going to give us a rundown of what is inside here. As you can see, we are showing eight active CPU cores. Now, one thing that I thought was really kind of cool is that if we scroll over here and we look at the sensors, this thing, it is registering a whole bunch of sensors. We got an accelerometer, magnetometer. Now, I bet a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing here is also available, you know, just kind of standard on some other phones. But nevertheless, there are 18 sensors on here that seem rather sophisticated. So to test the sensory, I really should turn off that orientation lock, but that, that's going to be okay. Proximity sensor. This is 1.0. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Hand away. So we have working proximity sensor. I'm not going to go through and test all the sensors and things on this. Let's see. It's showing that it has one thermal sensor for the battery. What do we have here under camera? Oh yeah, here we go. So it's showing 50.1 megapixels on the first back camera, which is 8160 by 6144. That's like the size of a billboard or something. And then we got 15.9 for the front megapixel, uh, for the 15.9 megapixels for the front camera. Uh, another 5.3 on the back, another 5.3 on the back, 4.9 on the back. So it just, I mean, it's got more cameras than what you probably really, really need. So there's a lot of goodness here showing under the camera specs. Holy smokes, look at the supported resolutions. Here's our processor information. This MediaTek CPU is actually an eight core CPU. It is a 64 bit processor and it ranges from 500 megahertz to 2050 megahertz. 
This sort of processing power is excellent for gaming and keeping the kids busy in the back seat of the car. So going back into the settings here, we have gestures and keys. On the side here, we have this button that I was unsure about what to do with it. And that is a, just a, a multi-function button and you can configure it on what to do for one click, double click, or long press. So you can make it so that whenever you click it one time, you know, it's gonna start a sound recording or open the flashlight or screenshots. I'm gonna leave the one click operation to do nothing. Also the double click for now to do nothing, but I'm just gonna make it so that if I long press it, that it'll turn on the flashlight. So that way now, whenever I hold down that side button, it's just gonna turn on the flashlight, which is extremely handy. So I noticed that on some of the specs for these phones that the notch on top that the, the camera sits inside of is actually starting to be advertised like it is a, a feature or something. It's kind of strange. The notch on this phone is configurable. You can make it so that the notch is what they call hidden. Like the status bar just, it kind of drops down and it replaces that with black and, and it, it hides the notch like the phone doesn't have one or you can turn it on. So I'm going to leave the notch enabled. I actually have more screen size that way. Screen saver. We can do a screen saver. Screen record. That's pretty handy. We can tell it to record the microphone device audio. And then also screen record is available up here on the drop down menu at the top. There's actually a lot of stuff available up here. Lock screen display. Notifications on lock screen show all notification content. So we can set it to display sensitive, you know, whether or not to display your messages with the, with the phone locked. That's reasonable. Well, let's see, security. We can do a password, fingerprint, or face unlock. Now I have set up a password and the fingerprint. I actually just started to do this and decided this needs recorded. So it has you scan all different parts of your finger. Oops, move too slow, just like we're doing here. Now on Apple phones, this is actually pretty quick. You scan it a few times and you move on and you're done. This here, we actually have to scan the fingerprint quite a few times. Come on, baby. Almost there. I gotta keep doing this until this circle's full. And don't accidentally push the button. You just want to lay your finger on it. Because if you accidentally push it, you get to start over. One more. Woohoo! Fingerprint added. So I went ahead and also programmed my other fingerprint in here. If you touch it with the wrong finger, it just zzz, it vibrates a little bit and does not light up. But if you brush just the right finger on there, just barely touch it, boom, it's unlocked. So the fingerprint sensor is actually really sensitive. If you just like pick the phone up like this and you, your, your hand touches it, you can feel it vibrate because it, it thinks you're touching a fingerprint to it. But at the same time, it is just really beneficial because it doesn't take any effort at all to unlock the phone. You just touch it and you're good. So how about face unlock? This is gonna be the first time that I've ever used Android to identify a face. Let's see, looking at the phone may accidentally unlock it. Yeah, that, that makes reasonable sense. And people look similar to you, such as your siblings, can also unlock your phone. That's, uh, hmm, that's kind of interesting. All right, let's give this a try and see what happens. We're gonna agree. How to set up face unlock. So basically you pick the phone up and point it at your face. So I'm gonna hit start here. Center your face in the circle. Hmm, looks kind of familiar. Here we go. All set, looks good. Like. That was instantly, I don't know how I feel about that, but it is set up. I guess now I should see how it works. So here we go, wait for it. Slide to unlock. No, it wants my passcode. Unlocking your phone is not enabled. How did that even happen? There it goes. Ah, open right up, how about that? Let's do it once more. Let's say, man, it unlocks like Will it see me over here? Like, what if I, what if I'm over here? Yeah, it's unlocked instantly. And I unlocked it with a finger that I don't have programmed. So let's just pick it up. It's recognizing me way back here. So I don't know, I'll mess around with it a little bit and see if it'll mistake any relatives as being me. Maybe you don't know, think my son is me or something, but that actually works pretty good. So I think it may actually be better to disable the fingerprint sensor and just use the, um, the face unlock. That way you don't have this thing mistaking you for, you know, touching the fingerprint sensor and stuff whenever you're not actually, they're not kidding. This thing is unlocking on accident just because it can see me.
So that takes care of most of the security stuff. It does also have smart unlock, which is a feature that will allow you to, you know, have the phone automatically unlocked whenever you're home, you know, just certain places where you lay your phone down, it's just unlocked all the time. And it's going to do that with the GPS or maybe even the Wi-Fi hotspot. So we do have some standard uh, protection stuff here. We've got find my device, which is really going to save your butt if for any reason you can't find your device. Now, something else that I found inside of the files app, we've got this safe folder option down here. So it's sort of like the vault app that I see on so many different iPhones that everybody is really concerned about for some reason, I'm not sure why, but basically this is a spot where you can set it up and, and save files to where you're not gonna be able to access them without a password. I don't know if it's an encrypted folder. Hopefully all files in safe folder are protected by a lock. If you forget this lock, it cannot be recovered. So it sounds like that is actually an encrypted folder and that's just built in here natively. How about the, uh, the camera? My first couple of videos with this phone were just a little bit shaky. I did not realize that it had built-in image stabilization. Uh, I mean, I didn't realize that it had it, but did not have it enabled. Here's Mr. Gopher Tortoise, pretty much like any other beach creature, whereas he's actually going to chase this lady down for food. I know you're not supposed to feed them, but with as many people that come here and feed all of these animals, this has just got to be part of their regular diet. All right, 1080 with HDR. So comparing this side by side with my old phone, it looks like the 7 Plus has a better frame rate, but the black view is getting a much sharper image. That's my opinion anyways. Okay, here's 2K video. Here we go. Yeah, say cheese. Cheese. So as you can imagine, this camera has a whole ton of options. We've got a wide angle mode here, which is going to use the wide angle camera on the back. Uh, we've got the normal 1X mode, and then also there's like this 2X mode. So switching over to the video camera, our video quality options are 2K, Full HD, or HD. And then it is also really important to note that video stabilization is not turned on by default. So with the stabilization enabled, I decided I should take just a couple more videos. For some reason, I just don't quite hold the Blackview phone level. I'm always like slanted to the left. When it comes to camera options, this thing really has my previous phone beat. If we put this thing into pro mode, we are actually able to manually focus by sliding this bar here. I'm also able to adjust the white balance, the ISO, the exposure, as well as the shutter speed. Let's take it into the dark. Okay, we'll turn on night vision mode. Watch this. Okay, keep going. You can see where you're walking. See your feet? Look down. Whoa! So that's something, isn't it? Look at that. It's gonna see your, it sees your toys in the dark. Mia, come here. Come on, Cena, the wiener. Uh -huh. She's like, okay, Ooh. what are we doing in the dark? Uh, her Look eyes are like glowing. It's pitch dark under your bed. That's mm -hmm. the red airplane. We need Jordan. Now we'll go. Okay, test it outside. Oh, wow, it's nice and overexposed. Oh, never mind. Further into the darkness. Oh. Please don't drop it in the pool, but I think it would be fine if you dropped it in the pool. But I'm not sure. Let's test, let's test. Okay, shine around. It looked like your average security karma. Well, that's because you're right up close to it though, but what's it look like if you're not right up against one of the trees? Okay, come over here. Where? But you go first since you got the night vision. I don't want to fall. Okay, make a left onto the stepping stones. 
Okay, shine it over there at the kayaks, which on this phone looks just completely blank. There are no kayaks. On this phone, woo, we have kayaks. I think that's a pretty good demonstration of the night vision. Like Tree. it really does work well. You cannot see anything out here. It is dark. So I think that pretty well wraps this up here. Now, I have to be honest, whenever I first started this review, I did not think that I was gonna wind up liking this phone. But by the time I finished trying out some things and using it for a little while, I've actually really wound up liking it. I think my main complaint as a YouTuber is the microphone that gets used whenever you're recording video. I imagine it's quite the challenge to try to make a waterproof device that also has a really good sound in microphone. So that's sort of a, a trade-off here, I guess. So I wrote here that the, the microphone sucks. It's actually not that bad. And really their target demographic here is construction workers and, and you know people on the job sites and stuff. They may not necessarily be picky about the microphone. The face ID does not work in the dark. That's you know a big deal. I don't really care about that. Um, cameras. 30 frames per second. Honestly, this was a much bigger deal whenever I first started the review, but by the end of this video where I've had a chance to compare those, you know, the two videos side by side, it just, it's really negligible for the, the, the amount that I actually use that. So, I mean, this is not, this is not a real big deal right now. Polarized sunglasses. Now you'll notice that I wrote a one half here above that. That is because if you look at this phone through polarized sunglasses and it is orientated in the portrait orientation, it looks okay. But if you rotate it to landscape, that image will just flat out disappear. I mean, it is just like there's nothing on the screen. But if you remove the sunglasses, you know, the image is just clearly there. And this is something that I ran into way back in the early days of like iPhone screen replacement. At first, this was like a total disaster for me because I'm using sunglasses all the time down here. But knowing that it works fine if it's just in portrait mode and I'm only going to have to pull the sunglasses off my head when I'm recording a video, that's pretty much what I do anyways. So the list of pros here really, I think, far outweighs the list of cons. And that, you know, that just really depends on what you're comparing this to. I'm, through the most of this video, I'm comparing this to my daily driver, which is an iPhone 7 Plus. Okay, Google, turn off shop light. Wow, that's really dark. So that is going to be the end of this video. If you are interested in this product, all the links you need are in the description below. Also, there's probably going to be a lot of people watching this video that know a whole lot more about this than I do. So if you are one of those people and you've got comments or opinions and things, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to read it. And I'm sure people that are interested in this phone would also love to read it too. And with that, I will call an end of this video. I really thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Have a good day or night. It's actually night. You think we should throw this phone in the water and see if it'll survive? I don't think so either. I don't think I'm going to get it wet at all. You think we should throw it in the water and see if it survives? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's made for water, right? Yeah. Hmm. Holden said no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to intentionally try to damage it. Okay, this is 1080p with no HDR. You can always tell when it's cold because the beaches will be crowded, but hardly anybody's in the water. Yeah, once again, you're getting scared by seaweed.